Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our country, the president, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and land, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every for favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and peaceful seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house and your compassion and grant to us and those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Shout aloud to the, to the Lord, all the Let's earth. Let's pray to the Lord, Lord our God, Savior, and Lord, Lord, bless you. Your inheritance is the whole body of your church. Sanctify the Lord, and bless your house, and glorify them in the divine power. Do not forsake us, Lord. In the city of our Lord of hosts, in the city of our God, through the intercession of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. His place was made in peace, and his dwelling in Zion. Session of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Through the intercession of the Theotokos, Savior, save us. In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Save us, O Son of God, who rose from the dead. Save us who sing to you, hallelujah. Glorious things were said concerning you, O city 
Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. I'm reading our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. With all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. <clears throat> Master. Lord our God, you've established in heaven the orders and hosts of angels and archangels to minister to your glory. Grant that holy angels may enter with us, that together we may serve and glorify your goodness. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Uh, 
Αφύλαξας αντικείμενοι των κόσμων ουκατέλης πεστεοτόκελ μετέσις προς την ζωή μη τυριπάρουσα την ζωή και τες πρεσβείες τεσσέσ μητρουμένη αγκανάτου τα ψυχάς ημό. Together, please, with our choir, the Apolitikion of our church. It is on page two of your bulletin. <laughs> is undying in intercession immovable is our hope in her for protection neither death nor burial prevailed over her as she is the mother of life she was removed to life by him the Lord who lived in her ever virgin Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy God, you dwell among your saints. You are praised by the seraphim with the thrice holy hymn and glorified by the cherubim who worship by all the heavens. You have brought all things out of nothing into being you created man and woman in your image and likeness and done with all the gifts of your grace. <clears throat> you give wisdom and unsupplication and understanding to the supplicant of God who lived the sinner and established repentance as a way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and unworthy servants, to stand at this hour before the glory of your altar. We offer you to worship and praise, Master, accept the thrice holy hymn from the lips of the sinners and visit us in your goodness. Forgive our voluntary and involuntary transgressions, sanctify our souls and bodies, and worship them, work, grant that we worship and serve and holiness all the days of our lives. <coughs> By the intercession of the Holy Spirit, God bless and our Virgin Mary, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages.
comes in the name of the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord,
some of us are retired and still have many, many ways to work, so we work all the time. Today, let us try and see how we can make work an intrinsic part of our faith lives in three major ways. We'll talk about the importance of work for our spiritual lives. We'll talk about finding meaning in our work. And third, how to sanctify our work with rest. So first, how is work important for our spiritual lives? When you read monastic literature, monks and nuns seem to be particularly concerned of a great danger, and that is laziness. And for this reason, monks and nuns have obediences, that's how they call them, basically tasks that they always have to do, most, most of the times they're manual tasks, and they have to accomplish these in the monastery because they know that if they don't, then they become lazy. Now, those of us who have families, we have exactly the same thing, isn't it? Some of us do the dishes, some of us clean, some of us cut the grass, take care of the flowers, cook, and so forth. And so, by having all these tasks, we are all protected against laziness. Let me put it the other way around. Let's say you, have, you are a parent of a young child, and you ask your child, what are you doing? Nothing. An hour later, what are you doing? Nothing. Doesn't that ring a few bells and go, uh-oh, there's a problem? Because nobody ever does nothing. You know that, right? Nothing is really not nothing. Nothing is maybe idle talk. Nothing could be a waste of time. Or worse, things that we don't approve. Sometimes children will come having just done something bad, and they go, why did you do that? I was bored. Boredom generally generates negative behavior. And so it is very important for us to always have something productive to do, something good, something that helps ourselves and that helps others, because work protects us against laziness and against bad behavior. Work is also a way of imitating God. As you all know, this entire world was created by God. And he worked for six days to make the heavens and the earth, to make all the plants, to make all the trees, the seas, the dry land, to make the small animals, the large animals. And because they are so beautiful, we call God the great artisan. An artisan is a skilled laborer, right? A skilled worker. And so as human beings, we bear the image of God in our hearts. And so we have to imitate God, we have to continue the work of God. This world around us is not finished. We have to make it more beautiful. And sometimes things go wrong in the world, we have to correct them. And that is part of what it means for us to be created in the image of God. But now, I want to take you to a rather challenging passage in that book of creation. Because it says that in the first day when God created the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the abyss. Does that sound like a great artisan to you? He created a blah, lump, <laughs> a formless void, right? But let me put this into perspective for you. I want you to imagine a really beautiful car. Can you see it with the eyes of your mind? Can you see a beautiful car right now? Yes? Um, what color is it? Black. Very good. Um, does it have, what, what color rims? Silver. Uh, Alex, leather seats? Leather seats, very good. Do you all see? Black car, silver rims, leather seats. What color? Red. I love this car. <laughs> I hate to do this to you, but I would like it to take away the leather seats. Can you see it in your uh, mind? Okay, now take the rims out. All the paint. Take out the engine. What are you left with? A shell. 
That's the formless void, isn't it? But imagine that you work at the car factory on the assembly line, and your job is to create that shell. And at the end of the day, you look at that thing and you go, and it was good. Because that shell will house a good engine, will protect people in case of an accident, will be the place where we put all the other seats. Do you understand? So what are we trying to get at? We're trying to get at the idea that sometimes in our work, we may have this feeling that we're working on a formless void. But let us try to find meaning in our work, even when our job is to create the formless void. That's the second point of the sermon today. How do we find religious meaning in that? First, we actually look back at the Bible and we realize that God, too, created the formless void. If He could not avoid that, we cannot avoid it either. It's necessary. It has to be done. And so let us look at our work as part of a greater good that is happening. And I'm sure that where each and every one of us are, even when we do the things that we don't really like, the formless void, we see the greater picture, and that greater picture is good for humanity, is good for our society, is good for our church. A second way we can find meaning in our work is to be a positive influence at our place at work. I hope you have friends at work. And if you do, are you making them better people? Are they better religious people because of you? Do you encourage each other to do the right thing? When you share with them that you went to church, do they share with you that they went and worshiped? And do you tell them something positive about your community? And do you give them life advice? Do you make them better people? So we need to be a positive influence at work. Sometimes we struggle to find meaning in what we do, right? But all of us who work really love the every other Friday. I don't know when you get paid. At Duquesne, we get paid every other Friday. I love my job every other Friday. <laughs> Well, money is never just money, isn't it? Money is the means by which we put food on the tables of our families. That's very meaningful. Money is the means by which we donate to our Holy Trinity Church. That is very meaningful. Money is the means by which we go to focus and feed the hungry. That is very meaningful. And so the work that we do we put it to God's work so that it participates in a greater purpose. And then, a last way maybe in which we can give more meaning to our work is to think about how we can transform every day into an opportunity to do good. Perhaps you have people under your authority when you go to work. When you stepped into that office, always ask yourself, what do can I do today? Perhaps you don't have people under your authority, but you have colleagues who are struggling. Every time you go to work, ask yourself, how can I help them? In other words, we are becoming an opportunity to do something good. There is always an opportunity to do good at our places of work. Let us do that. And that formless void on which we're working, on which God himself also worked, all of a sudden has a much better meaning. That was the second point of the sermon, but with your permission, I would like to return to the first one first, uh, the importance of work uh, as for, for our faith. In the book of Genesis, we read something very interesting, that God created Adam, and before he created Eve, before the fall, he gave Adam a task, and that was to till the earth, to take care of the garden. Did you know that Adam worked in the Garden of Eden? Isn't that interesting? If you were not paid, would you go to work? Man, now maybe that's a little bit too radical. But if you, if you were not paid, would you still do some work? And I'll bet you the answer is yes. As a matter of fact, many of us do a lot of work without ever being paid. 
Back to the example of gardening. Francis Bacon wrote, God Almighty first planted the garden, and indeed, it is the purest of human pleasures. I love that quote. God first planted the garden, and indeed, it is the purest of human pleasures. For those of us who like to cut grass, I do. For those of us who like to take flower, care of flowers, for those of us who like to give shape to trees, we understand that, isn't it? It's not something we do as a chore, something that we dread. It's something that we do as pleasure. And so today, I hope and pray that each and every one of us, when we work, we feel like Adam in the Garden of Eden. Whether we are retired and do work around the house, we are a stay-at-home parent, we go into an office, we are children who go to school. I really hope and pray that we all feel like Adam felt in the Garden of Eden before the fall, because gardening was that pure pleasure that God gave Adam. But after the fall, things changed a little, isn't it? We often go to work and we suffer. And that is because after Adam and Eve fell into the sin, God said, cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it should bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat. Do you hear that? By the sweat of your face you shall eat. It's not always pleasant. And so when we go to work and it's not pleasant, let us accept those days with humility, because it comes as a result of Adam and Eve. Since work is such an important part for our spiritual lives, let's also ask for God's help every time we begin a major task. Have you noticed how people oftentimes before they begin, they just do their cross and go, Lord, help me. And then they start doing it, right? But please know that there are also prayers that you can say before work. And I urge you, to find a prayer in your prayer book or go online and find a prayer before work, I'm going to share with you a prayer that I say in Romanian. I pray in Romanian when I'm by myself. I pray in Romanian every day. In the beginning of the workday, I always say this prayer. So I translated it for you in English. You can still do it in English. God understands English even though he translates it back into his native language. So now, let me read it to you <laughs> in English. Lord Jesus Christ, you have said through your prophet David, people go out to their work and to their labor until the evening. And again you have said through your blessed apostle Paul, anyone unwilling to work should not eat. Then again you have said, without me, you can do nothing. Lord God, I listen wholeheartedly to your words, and with humility I run to your goodness praying. Help me with your grace to finish the work that I begin in the name of the Father and the Son in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's a very short prayer. It's one that we can easily learn. Again, look into your prayer books, look online, and read it how many times a week? Six. So that brings us into the third point of the sermon, namely that we need to sanctify our work by resting on the seventh day. So that's the third point. This is why we pray the prayer before work, six days a week, not seven. You all know that God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested, right? Good. And by the way, that's not the text we should take literally, correct? Do you really imagine that God just shoveled the seas, and then the plants, and then human beings, and then it goes, whew, that was tiring. That's a lot. I need to sit down. And then the eighth day, back to work for eternity. Right? I mean, that's not how it works. It's really an image to tell us we need to work. And that was a reminder after the people of God, Israel, returned back from exile into Babylon. They have been working each and every day of their lives for almost a century. And so when they returned from that exile, Many people still wanted to continue to work, but the elders would tell them, do not do that, because the seventh day is holy. Why is it holy? The young ones would ask. 
Because the first day God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void. The second day he made the sky. The third day he made the plants. Fourth day the sun and so forth. So you understand? In times of slavery, in times of exile, people worked all the time. But when they're free, one day of the seven, they take to dedicate it to God. To drive that point even closer to home, let me give you an example from less than a hundred years ago. It was in the Communist Soviet Union when they had, let's say, two major components. One, destroy faith. Two, have people work all the time. And so in the Soviet Union in 1929, the government instituted five days weeks. Do you get it? So it's not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every week was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I mean, I'm not sure that these were the days or how they were called, but it was a five-day week. They never added that to 30-day months or 31-day months. And within these five days, each person was given a day of rest. But it was random, so people in the same family did not have the same day of rest. In other words, there was never a week when they would all stop working to worship God. And if every day is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know what you forget? When Sunday is. And when they don't add to 30, month, uh, 30 days months, you know what you forget? When is April? When is December? When do we celebrate Christmas? Right? That didn't work out too well for the government. And so in 1931, they implemented a six-day week with one day of rest for everybody in the country. But what do you still not have? Seven days, weeks. And so the purpose was to make people forget when Sunday is, when Easter is, when Christmas is, when all these religious holidays take place so that people would not rest. Well, that was in times when we didn't have freedom. Why should we do that now that we do have freedom? We have to work six days and rest on the seventh. Please know that even during those times, people resisted. Romania never went to a five-week day or six-week day. But I remember distinctly being a little kid and going to my grandparents at the countryside, and you know, you take a hammer. Kids growing up in communism, we didn't have toys everywhere, you know, and there was no internet, no phones, no nothing. So you just take a piece of wood, some nails, hammer them, make yourself a toy, right? That's how I grew up. And I remember distinctly my grandpa yelling at me like I have done the worst thing ever because I'm hammering on a Sunday. And I, I was not a religious person growing up, never said God, never understood anything. I had no idea what planet my grandfather lived on. But he was just telling me that it's Sunday and I cannot work. I wasn't working, I was playing, I was making toys. But I'm telling you, this is the only memory that I have of my grandfather yelling at me. Otherwise, he did whatever else we wanted. <laughs> But this one, he was really upset with me because I was hammering on a Sunday. Never explained to me why I'm not supposed to explain on a Sunday. It's just a Sunday and you don't do it. So of course I did it. <laughs> because there was no explanation, especially when he wasn't looking around. But you see how some people resisted? And this is how the faith survived. Because the seventh day is a holy day. The seventh day is a gift for us when we rest. And so, in conclusion, God intended for us to work, and work is good for our souls. It guards us against laziness. It makes a positive impact in the world. And so God blesses our work. Regardless of what we do, we must find meaning in the work. And that is why also we need to pray 
that God would bless our work. But God did not intend for us to work continuously. He gave us this great gift, rest on the seventh day. Amen. Wisdom and grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. and Lord of all, and trust us to us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, the Lord of the seraphim, and the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You are alone and good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant. Cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit to invest with the grace of priesthood. I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. Do I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, or reject me from among your children, and make me a sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer you these gifts for you, Christ our God. By the offer and the offer of the one who receives and is distributed into you, we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent a cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us lay aside all the cares of this life, that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim sing the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trinity. Let us set aside all the cares of this life, that we may receive the King of all invisibly escorted by the angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Ita cherubim mysticos ikunis undes ketisopio triadi ten trisai nimen prosadunes. Come, let us worship God, our King, and bow down before Him. Come, let us worship and bow down to Christ Himself, our King and our God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. We behold through the cross. Joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, according to the multitude of tender mercies. Blot up my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my transgressions. For I acknowledge my transgressions and against you and live in sin. And then that which is evil in your sight, you have found justified and speak and blameless from your judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin. You shall purge with this, and I shall be clean. You shall wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. You shall make me hear sounds of joy and gladness at the bones that you have broken may rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. O Lord, you shall open my lips, and my mouth shall announce your praise. Sacrifice to God is a broken spirit. 
broken, contrite with heart, O oh God, do not despise, do good in your good pleasure to Zion, let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Βασιλεία αυτού πάντοτε νυν και αή και ει του αιώνα στον αιώνα. May the Lord our God remember all. In his kingdom, always, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. May the Lord again remember your priest that in his kingdom is always known ever to the ages of ages. Of ages. Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who entered with faith, for the, our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. 
for forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian end to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise and those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your presence that our sacrifice may be, be pleasing to you. That your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be with all. And your Let us love one another that with oneness of mind we may confess. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. Christ is in our midst. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, who was in the heart of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right. 
is proper and right to sing to you, to bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all things we know and do not know, for blessings, seen and unseen, that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels and tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim and the seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying, Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you are holy and most holy and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood, which is shed for you and for many of the new covenant for, for the forgiveness of sins. Remembering, therefore, this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Thus act on son si prospero men catapanda, que via panda. Please bow your heads through the end of the next hymn. W once again, we offer to you this spiritual worship without the shedding of blood. We ask, pray, and entreat you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. So that they be to those who partake in the forevigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer you the spiritual worship for those who are opposed in the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for every righteous spirit made perfect in faith.
both holy, pure, blessed, and glorious ladies, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Great is the name of the Holy Trinity, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Salvas. Grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace. Keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind and all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That our loving God, who has received them at his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We entrust you, loving Master, our whole life and hope. We ask, pray, and entreat, make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries in this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence, without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, o endis uranis, aies tito to nomasu, el teto i vasiliasu, genithito to telimasu, os en urano kertis gis, tonatum imon to nebusion, losim in simeron, gafis amin to oblimata imon, os gemis afim en spelete simon, gemis en engis mas aspirasmon, O ti su est in Vasilia, che i dinamis che i doxa, tu patros che tu iug to iu pneumatos nin che ai, che su seonas to neonon. Irini passi. Tas che falassi monto, crio clino me. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you have created all things, and by your great mercy you have brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have not bowed before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. 
Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for our benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick, physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life-creating Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place and the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us. And let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. God, be merciful to me, a sinner, and save me. God, be merciful to us. Let us be attentive. The holy gifts for the holy people of God. Da ahiati sahis. And then God has broken his tribute, broken the body, and his broken the body. And so he sanctifies us for taking the faith, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for life eternal. Amen. How shall I, whom unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Loving Master, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my condemnation because of my unworthiness but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as did Judas. But as a thief I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal kingdom. Sisters in Christ, forgive my sinners. 
me, John, the unworthy priest has given the most the holy approach Christ our Lord, King and God to me, John. The unworthy priest has given the most precious holy body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Precious holy blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hold us a chapter of lipstick under my sins and cleansing my transgressions. Please forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner. And Lord of God, remember your priesthood in this kingdom always known ever to the ages of ages. God, glory to you, God, glory to you. God. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ. We praise and glorify your holy resurrection. You are our God. We know none other than you. We call upon your holy name. Come, all you faithful, let us worship the holy resurrection of Christ. For behold, through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing, Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. the fear of God, with faith and with love, draw near.
Oh God, save your people and bless your inheritance. Exalted, O God, above the heavens, and may your glory be above all the earth. Blessed is our God. Always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly life, giving an awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in your right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. Guard our lives and make our endeavors safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Christ our God, you are the fulfillment of the long prophecy, I fulfill the dispossession of the Father. For how to join gladness, all is now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Please join us as we offer Trisayu and prayers 65 years for the servant of God, Michael Parikakis. <laughs> Within your peace, O Lord, where all your saints repose, give rest also to the soul of your servant, for you alone are immortal. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are our God, who descended into Hades, and loosened the pains of those who are chained. Grant rest also, Savior, to the soul of your servant. Amen. 
Have mercy upon us, O God, according to your great love, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the repose of the departed servant of God, Michael, who has fallen asleep, and the, for the forgiveness of all his sins, both voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God place his soul where the righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of his sins from Christ our immortal King and God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and abolished the power of the devil, giving life to your world, give rest to the soul of your servant Michael, who has fallen asleep, in a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, or suffering. As a good and loving God, forgive every sin he has committed in thought, word, or deed, for there is no one who lives in the sinless, you alone are without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your servant Michael has fallen asleep. Christ our God, unto you we give glory, together with your Father, who is without beginning, in your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant Michael, Christ our God, unto you we give glory. With your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Everlasting be your memory, our brother, worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. May your memory be eternal, dear brother, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. Together, please. <laughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord in his mercy come upon you through his divine grace and love always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Christ our God, and I hope glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, have mercy on us and save us as a good, loving, and merciful God. Through the prayers of his most holy and pure mother, the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the holy glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, the holy glorious apostles, the holy God-bearing fathers, the holy victorious martyrs, the holy righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of Saint Thaddeus, the apostle of the 70, the patriarch of Athanasius of Constantinople, the holy martyr Havas and her sons Theognis, Agapius, and Pistos, whose memories we celebrate this day. Our father among the saints, John Christus, Archbishop of Constantinople, whose divine liturgy was celebrated in honor of all the saints. Through the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. May the Holy Trinity bless and protect all of you. So good to have you all here this morning. Please be seated.
Good morning to all of you, and again, thank you for being here. So good to have you here. So excited to see our young men back returning from vacation and camps and everything. I had an army of them back there today. So what a wonderful thing, parents. Thank you for your encouragement for that. The beautiful choir, our chanters, our parish council, everything it takes to keep this parish running and bearing witness to Christ. I want to welcome visitors today. Uh, we have uh, someone named Tara. I believe that might be in the back there. We have Presbytera Thanasia from Charleston, West Virginia. Where are you, Presbytera? Hi, welcome. Nice to have you here with your daughters, Juliana, Emilia, and Cassiani. Hello, girls. Uh, also, um, Mr. and Mrs. Malonikas from uh, Weirton? No, Weirton, correct? Yes, parents of Catherine and Atakis. Nice to have you here. And any other visitors that are here vacationing or just passing through today, we welcome you as well as anyone that are joining on the internet today. There are quite a few, I believe. There are some big things going on. So today, um, all right. So today we had a Tersayun for Michael Parakakis for 65 years. The Parakakis family invites you to join them. They are sponsoring Hospitality Hour. And also uh, a note of thanks to all those who have participated in the Open Table Hospitality Hours in the last few weeks. They were wonderful. Thank you. We've got more coming up later, but we're pretty well covered, I think, for the next uh, number of weeks. Um, there is a Ladies Philoptikos meeting today in the conference room, and the Greek dancers will meeting, are meeting in the fireside room. But also, for everybody, uh, remember this whole idea of faith, family, community, our vision involves us reaching out to each other as community members, and that includes people that are homebound, nursing homebound, sick, or whatever that might be. So our visitation ministry regularly sends out gifts and icons and cards, and at least once a year, maybe twice, I think, they make these beautiful large cards and we put them in the gallery for all of you to sign. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't know who the people are, you're reaching out as an offering of love, telling them you are still remembered in the life of Holy Trinity Church. So please go and just walk down the gallery today, pick up a pen at each of them, there's a number of them, and sign them. If you know somebody, make a personal comment. If not, just sign your name and it's a wonderful act of love. And also, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. They're in the grand room, so the hospitality hour is in the gallery. Please don't just leave. Go into the grand room. I guess there's a long table set up in the middle. And their hospitality, you can sit and enjoy in the grand room, but also the cards are in the middle there, so please do all of that. And finally, I know you get tired of hearing this, but we don't get tired of asking because we're all going to get really tired if you don't do this, and that is we need you to sign up to help with the festival. I promise you, we are going to get swamped. Every festival that I've heard of this summer testifies to that. You are really going to need it. Dan and Harry and the whole committee are working really hard. Would you like to, Dan, give a little extra push instead of me? Come on, uh, come on up here so they can hear you. Because they get tired of me asking, but I guarantee you, <clears throat> that as the festival gets going, we're going to be really sorry if we don't have enough people here. So, Dan. Sure. Well, the first thing is it dovetails really well with what Father Radu said today in his, in his talk, and it's when we work together to face challenges for a purpose, it creates meaning for all of us, and that's very fulfilling. And I've gotten to know a lot of you through the festival because of the work that we do together. So that's really what you're signing up for. You're signing up to get to know people, even if it's 10 minutes, it's amazing what it does for you because it rolls through the whole year. You see them at church every week and you have something to say and it grows. So in, in today's world, we're always looking for fulfillment, right? We always wonder what the formula is. And it really is about things like this. So working together, facing this challenge, it's purposeful, it creates meaning, and that meaning just creates a lot of fulfillment. So that's really what's in it for all of us. If you've ever been here and witnessed things, I have to tell you last year when I witnessed setup and I saw what I saw with the people who were here, it was incredible. It just made me think, 
I have to do more, I can do more. Uh, just witnessing the few people who were here, it was a hard day. Just so you know, it was a very hard day. There were very few people here. And those who were really set a very good example for all of us. So let's all set an example for everybody in the community and let's sign up. The places that we need the most help is really in the salad area. We're still not quite sure whether we're gonna be able to produce the salads for the festival. So I'm looking at other options that we'd really rather not. So think about it like that. Would we rather do the salads ourselves or have somebody else do them for us? Things like that that we need, we need help in salad, we need help in the food line, and then we also need you to look at signing up in the gyro tent so that the people who are there can get a break, we can all work together and have a great time. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so, how do you sign up? One, there is, that's okay, no, take care of it. One, there is a table in the gallery. If you haven't yet signed up, there's no excuse for walking out today without putting your name on there, right? Two, if you'd rather do it online, you can go online and go to the website, the front page of the website, look for the little hands up sign, sign up on the website. Three, <clears throat> if you've been doing this for years and like, I always do pastry, I always do salads, I always do gyro tent, and I'm just gonna call, you know, whoever's in charge of that area, then call them, send them a text, say, I'll be there. Fourth, chair people of these various areas, get your list of regulars. Oh yeah, you always come, guess what? I need you here, I need you there. Don't anybody be offended when someone says, you've gotta come and work, I really need you. Because that's an offering of you having an opportunity to serve your church. And besides that, as a priest, I see this all the time and I hear it all the time. People love the food, they love the dancing, they love the music, but you know what really impresses people when they come to this church for the festival? I hear it all the time from our visitors. Your people love your church. I can't believe how many young people you have working here, your teenagers, whatever. We can't get anybody helping out at our, at our things. And, our, and this is across denominations, by the way, not just other Orthodox parishes. So that's your witness. Your witness is your love for Christ. I'm sacrificing my day, my time, and I love my church. So when you sign up, or when you click, or when you call or text to get involved, I want you to hear yourself saying, I love my church. That's why I'm doing it, because God loves you. Okay, God bless you all.